airport in San Francisco has refused to reinstate President Trump's ban on travelers from seven mainly Muslim countries entering the U.S. It unanimously rejected the administration's assertion of presidential authority and questioned its motives. The ban was suspended last week by a judge in Seattle after two American states argued that it was unconstitutional. Moments after the ruling was released, President Trump responded defiantly, tweeting, See you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. Well, a little later, he had this to say about the court's decision. It's a political decision, and we're going to see them in court, and I look forward to doing it. So you believe the judges made it? We have decision. a situation where the security of our country is at stake. And it's a very, very serious situation. So we look forward, as I just said, to seeing them in court. Okay. Thanks, Do you guys. think this has undercut the Thanks, early guys. days of your presidency? This is such a poor no, issue. this is just a decision that came down, but we're going to win the case. And have you conferred with your new attorney general on this tonight? Is he No, I haven't. Now? We just heard the decision. How did you find out about the decision, Mr. President? Just saw it. We just saw it just like you did. Via the news, et cetera, yeah. the media. But it's a decision that will win, uh, in my opinion, very easily. Well, the Washington State Attorney General, Bob Ferguson, whose office filed the initial lawsuit against Mr. Trump, responded, we've seen him in court twice. He went on to explain the importance of the ruling. The law is not an abstraction. The constitutional, provi the constitutional provisions at stake are fundamental to who we are as a people. When an executive order is adopted like this, with little thought, little planning, little oversight, that creates chaos throughout our country that has a real impact on people's lives here and abroad. Real impacts. And as attorneys and as professional staff who work for a public law firm like this, that is something we keep in mind every single day. That yes, when you hear a oral argument with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, it may seem like, hey, what's going on? What are they talking about? That procedural stuff. Behind all that procedural stuff, behind all those constitutional provisions, behind all those statutory provisions, at the end of the day, it's about people's lives and the impact on their lives and the future of our country and our Constitution. Well, senior aide to the president, Kellyanne Conway, was asked by reporters that Mr. Trump saw the ruling as a defeat. He sees it as <clears throat> what he's always seen it as, which is the statute provides a president, in this case, President Trump, with great latitude and authority to protect the citizens and protect the nation's national security. Uh, this was not argued on the merits. Now that we'll have an opportunity to argue on the merits, we, we look forward to doing that. We look forward to prevailing. I think his tweet was perfect when he said, we'll see you in court. And, the, na say. and the nation's safety is at stake here. Do you so think it's under well, our Washington correspondent David Willis says this is a setback for the new administration. President Donald Trump is learning very early on in his presidency the limitations on the power of that office. Now, the U.S. Uh, this appeals court in San Francisco has not gone as far as declaring this travel ban unconstitutional, but it did take issue uh, with the U.S. government's contention that uh, this ban was necessary in order to protect national security here, to protect the country from the threat of terrorism. The three justices making the point in their 29-page uh, a unanimous uh, ruling that uh, there was no evidence that anyone from any of the seven nations on this uh, w watch list, if you like, had uh, carried out a terrorist attack in the United States. And the appeals court refusing, therefore, to lift the temporary restraining order that was put in place by a district judge in Seattle last week. Now, that means that uh, refugees from around the world and citizens from the seven nations who were mentioned in that executive order can continue to come to the United States until this matter is settled once and for all by the courts and quite possibly by the highest court in the land, the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, within the past hour, President Trump has backed down from a threat to abandon America's decades-old one-China policy. His pledge to continue the policy, which has maintained peace between China and Taiwan and helped build relations with the U.S. for almost 40 years, came during his first phone conversation with China's leader, Xi Jinping. Now for the business news. Aaron's here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Very good. Friday. Yes. And.